billionaires, hope you are doing amazing today. We are about to dive into chapter seven of Life Force by Tony Robbins. Hope y'all are ready. This book has been amazing, so enlightening, so incredible, so inspiring, so motivating. And so I'm excited to dive in. My name is Vanessa Black, and I am one of the owners and founders of Billionaire. And we're on a mission, y'all, mission to impact the lives of 4 billion souls to achieve personal freedom and financial freedom. And we're going to do that through developing our minds, our bodies, and our souls. All right. So let's dive right into it. I don't want to waste any more time here. Chapter seven, page 166. If you have the book with you, uh, you can definitely have your physical book while you listen in. It's a great way to just be able to capture all of the amazingness and take it all in. So chapter seven, incisionless brain surgery, the impact of focus ultrasound. I feel like a new person. I have my independence back. I can do anything and everything I want to do again. Kimberly Splatter, Parkinson's patient. In this chapter, you're going to learn about a breakthrough tool, a breakthrough, breakthrough tool for incisionless brain surgery. It sounds like science fiction, but in this chapter, we're going to share with you how more than 5,000 Parkinson's and essential tremor patients around the world had found significant relief with Insight Tech's focused ultrasound therapy, how the non-toxic therapy is FDA approved for treating prostate tissue, a way to destroy uterine fibroids, a source of pain and heavy menstrual bleeding for millions of women without harming adjacent organs, proven pain relief in cases of metatastic bone cancer where radiation is not an option. By destroying nerve tissue on the bone's outer layer, it can ease patients suffering and reduce the need for brain fogging medications. FDA trials are underway to use a similar approach to deliver to the brain chemotherapies and new cutting edge medicines that would be otherwise be blocked by an evolutionary brain barrier. If the studies pans out, Doctors will have a new tool to fight lethal brain cancers, depression, and even the white whale of central nervous system diseases, Alzheimer's. A promising preliminary trial to calm down a structure in the brain linked to anxiety and addiction. One goal is to stop opioid overdoses, which killed nearly 70,000 people in the U.S. in 2020. A proven treatment for Parkinson's. When Kimberly Splutter was told in her mid forties what she had Parkin that she had Parkinson's disease. She was surprised and devastated. She'd seen older Parkinson patients who could no longer walk. So I thought I was going to lose all my mobility. Then her fears came to pass. Over the course of a few years, Kimberly lost the ability to run, to bike, to hike. Her toes curled spasmodically. Her left leg bounced as though it had a mind of its own. When she tried to cross her leg to make it stop, her left leg would hyperextend it and lock. The pain was intense. Kimberly was taking 15 or more pills a day and just it just kept getting worse. Having always been an active and athletic person, she now struggled to dress herself. She hit a low point at a wedding when, quotations, my dad came up and asked me to dance with him and I couldn't get out of the chair because my back and my foot were cramping so bad. That's every little girl's dream to have that dance with her dad. And I couldn't do it. Kimberly was beginning to live her worst nightmare to be bound to a wheelchair. Kimberly, this situation looked grim until she learned about a new non-invasive frontier for treating disorders of the brain. According to the Parkinson's Foundation, Nearly a million people are living with Parkinson's in the U.S. alone, and 60,000 more are diagnosed each year. It's a brutal brain disease that primarily attacks the motor system. Telltale signs include rigidity, agonizingly slow movement, and at, at least one of four patients, uncontrollable shakes and tremors. Parkinson's is caused by the loss of neurons that manufactures dopamine a natural chemical messenger that controls our muscle movements. Our appetite and our mood and self-control. 
Suffice is to say that when we don't make enough of it and we're up against a really difficult and complex problem, there has been no cure for Parkinson's and treatments options have been limited. The frontline therapy Levodopa won FDA approval back in 1970, which tells you all you need to know about the lack of medical progress over the last half a century. The researchers we've spoken to say that Levodopa is a flog drug at best and often causes shakes and abnormal movements of its own. And if that wasn't discouraging enough, its anti-tremor benefits tend to fade over time. For as many as half of Parkinson patients, it doesn't really work at all. Until very recently, the only established alternative was deep brain, deep brain stimulation, which might not sound so bad until you find out how you get stimulated. Surgeons drill a hole into your skull to implant an electrode, which connects to a pacemaker-like generator implanted in your chest. Complications range from infections to brain bleeds. Let's just say that open brain surgery isn't for everybody. Like a lot of people, Kimberly was waiting for something that could help her without such scary side effects. Finally, she found it. Focused ultrasound or high energy sound wave precision guided by MRIs. She enrolled in a clinical trial to evaluate the technology for treating Parkinson's motor symptoms. After 20 years of research, development, and clinical experience by an Israeli medical device company called InsightT, Focus Ultrasound was approved by the FDA to treat essential tremor in 2016 and tremor-dominant Parkinson's in 2019. It has alleviated these symptoms for the great majority of patients with no incisions, no general anesthesia, next to no risk of infection and minimal pain. Surgeons are laying aside their scalpels for a keyboard and a mouse. Results are instantaneous. Patients return home usually the same day without ever seeing the inside of an operating room. Amazing. They regain the ability to text on their phones and cut up their food or go back to painting portraits or playing the guitar. They're reclaiming their lives with a single two to three hour outpatient procedure. Amazing. If their stunning success with Parkinson's was all the Inside Tech team had to show for themselves, they'd have earned their spot in this book and then some. What is the bottom line? If Insight Tech can sustain its recent winning streak, millions of hopeless cases will be hopeless no longer. That's beautiful. Getting to the source with precision ultrasound. Focus ultrasound is really a revolutionary technology that allows us to perform functional neurosurgery without any of the risks of implanted electrodes or hardware. So it's focused ultrasound. Dr. Rees Cosgrove. A few days before Kimberly's treatment, a CT scan was performed to measure the thickness and density of her skull and confirm that she was suitable for focused ultrasound. On procedure day, when she arrived in a wheelchair at the University of Maryland Medical Center, her head was shaved. With existing technology, hair can dilute or deflect the sound waves. Inside Tech is already working on a new approach that will not require shaving the head. Then she was fitted with a million dollar halo shaped ultrasound helmet. After sliding the patient into an MRI scanner, the surgeon applied the first of series sonications or what Kimberly called zaps, more than a thousand sound waves that converge on spot deep in the center of her brain. It's the same basic technology used for imaging and pregnancies, but far more focused and powerful. The power of focus, the power of focus. Think of a magnifying glass that concentrates energy from the sun to ignite a campfire, except with beams of acoustic energy subbing in for sunlight. Inside Tech's device aimed the sound waves as at a malfunctioning piece of Kimberly's thalamus, a part of the brain that governs motor control. As the surgeon gradually intensified the ultrasound, the noisy tissue was heated to around 130 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the minimum temperature required to disrupt the circuits that cause involuntary movements and shaking. 
Science has isolated the source of Parkinson's related tremor two or three decades ago. We've always known that was the problem, says Dr. Arjun Desai, Insitech's chief strategic innovator officer. We just never had an elegant way of getting to it without cutting your head open or delivering radiation. Insitech's revolutionary device, developed by some of the same scientists who created Israel. Israel's Iron Dome air defense system can pinpoint sound waves to targets the size of the tip of a pencil. The critical technological breakthrough, Desai says, is our ability to target a tiny submillimeter region so we can avoid areas of the brain that control speech and other functions. It's the ultimate in precision, personalized medicine. After each zap, followed by a round of neurological testing, Kimberly could feel herself getting stronger and stronger. She experienced a sensation of heat and a little nausea, but nothing more. Her tremor and pain were receding in real time. After zap number 14, her neurologist, Dr. Paul Fishman asked her, if you could stay where you are now, would you call your treatment a success? Kimberly said, yes, absolutely. The doctor said, then we're done. The clinical trial director told her to get up and walk. And I thought, I can walk? Kimberly recalls, I knew I could. She rose to her feet, lightly holding the director's hand more for security than physical support. She slowly crossed the room without a wobble. Soon she was walking normally. Her Parkinson's shuffle was gone. Two years later, Kimberly completed a 50 mile bike ride along the coast of Maine a fundraiser to support the Michael J. Fox Foundation. She was babysitting three days a week with her three-year-old grandson and more impressive yet, keeping up with him. Aside from some mild headaches and minor involuntary movements on her untreated right side, she remained mostly symptom-free for two years. After that, unfortunately, some of her Parkinson's symptoms began to reappear. But as Kimberly said, focused ultrasound has given me a new lease on life and I take advantage of it every day. In a clinical trial, patients showed on average a 62% improvement in their tremor score three months after the procedure. Treatment-related side effects were mostly mild and temporary. The most common was numbness and tingling. Based on the clinical findings over the last two years, Dr. Desai estimates that up to 80% of Parkinson's patients shows substantial relief from their tremor. Let's be clear about one thing. Parkinson's disease is progressive and degenerative and focused ultrasound cannot cure it. It doesn't address disease-related speech issues, mood disorders, or cognitive decline. And since the therapy is so new, there is yet no guarantee that a person's tremor or motor symptoms won't return years later. But for the estimated 680,000 Parkinson patients, Focused ultrasound can turn back the clock and restore critical function. Besides easing tremors, besides easing tremors, the same therapy can target another part of the brain that triggers slow and rigid movements. Two other common symptoms of Parkinson's. Doctors are really ready, are already using it commercially in Japan. And according to Dr. Desai, the potential impact is monumental. Treating essential tremors. Around 20 years ago, Carl Wiedemann, a retired Florida engineer and world-class senior competitive swimmer who had held three world records in his age class, started having trouble filling out his cheeks. His clear handwriting turned squiggly. Then he noticed his hand shaking when he poured his morning cup of coffee. He went to a neurologist who ran him through tests to rule out conditions like Parkinson's or multiple sclerosis or some undetected brain trauma. The good news, the doctor said, was that Weedman had, non, had none of the above. The not so good news was that he had a condition called essential tremor and it would probably get worse. Essential tremor is the most common of all movement disorders, affecting around 10 million people in the United States. Former, biz, former President Bill Clinton and retired Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor have it. So did the late Catherine Hepburn. Yet somehow the central tremor tends to get overlooked in terms of public awareness and funding for research. 
Many medical professionals, professionals consider a syndrome, a collection of overlapping symptoms rather than a full-fledged disease. Some even call it benign tremor, but there's nothing benign about its impact on a person's daily life. The central tremor can turn the most basic task into steep and jag mountains to climb. Though it's most common and typically most severe in older people, it strikes young people and those in middle age as well. It can derail careers and make people embarrassed, isolated, and depressed. For a competitive swimmer like Carl Weedman, it, it threatened to steal the life he loved. Something had to be done, he said, so I went looking for answers. For a while, Carl kept his shaking at bay with a prescription drug called Primidoni, an anti-seizure medication that wouldn't interfere with his intensive swim training. But then the primidone reacted with another medication and had to be discounted. The tremor got worse. Simple activities Carl once took for granted, buttoning his t-shirt, tying his shoelaces became daily frustrations. A bowl of soup was a non-starter. When deep brain stimulation came on the scene, Carl checked it out. When he found out about the drilling, he said, thanks, but no thanks. He'd hold out for something less invasive. Then came the sad day when Carl quit competitive swimming. He worried that he'd fall from the starting blocks before the race began. His future looked bleak. After Focus Ultrasound gained FDA approval for treating essential tremor in 2016, Carl connected with Dr. Travis Tierney, a neurosurgeon then working at the Sperling Medical Group in Delray Beach. Dr. Trav Travis Tierney. It's funny, in Florida, we live like uh, 30 minutes from Delray. It's one of the three dozen US medical centers, including the Mayo Clinic, Sanford, and Penn Medicine that collaborate with Inside Tech and deliver this extraordinary innovation. Like Kimberly, Carl underwear a series of MRI guided sound waves zaps to burn away a small part of his thalamus. It's a very delicate dance the surgeon is doing. He said, he's going after a spot in your brain that's about the size of a pea without having to physically go into your skull. After each sonication, Carl was asked to trace a spiral on a pad of paper. Over the course of three hours, his drawing improved from irregular spikes to a smooth flowing curve. Within seconds after the treatment concluded, he was able to legibly write his name for the first time in 15 years. Today, Carl is back in the pool, training all out to set new world records for the breaststroke in the 80 to 84 age group. He can button his shirt without a second thought, pour a glass of wine without spilling a drop. Friends who witness his old struggles are astounded. If you didn't know he had an essential tumor, well, you had no way of knowing. Focus ultrasound, he says, gave me back my life. Carl's case is dramatic, but not exceptional. According to Dr. Desai, more than 5,000 Parkinson's and essential tremor patients around the world have found significant relief with Insitex ultrasound therapy. Side text ultra sound therapy. Clinical trial data shows that the average patient's tremor had improved by 69% one year after the procedure, 75% after two years, and 76% after three years. As Dr. Desai explains, explains it. These people get better over time. Their brain starts firing again the way it used to. There's neuroplasticity. People are getting better because they're back in action. The latest numbers show durable improvements for at least five years out. Under the protocol approved by the FDA, patients are treated on the side of the brain that controls their dominant hand, the left side for right-handers, for example. An Instatex study is underway to treat the other side as well after allowing at least nine months for the brain to heal. Early returns are promising. Patients are getting the same positive impact in their second go round on the opposite side. 
Want some more good news? And the U.S. Focus Ultrasound is now covered by Medicare nationwide, along with Atina and Blue Cross, Blue Shield plans in more than 30 states. That's awesome. Given the therapy's proven efficacy and bang for the buck, other private insurers are expected to follow suit, which only makes sense. This technology both improves patients' quality of life and reduces the cost of their care. The power of focused ultrasound and its impact on brain cancers. We found, we found we can safely open the blood brain barrier. It's quick, reversible, and we don't see any major adverse effects. Dr. Nur Lipson, director of the Hartwell Center for Neuromodulation, Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center in Toronto. In 2018, Paul Hudspeth, an engineer and part-time cellist in Toronto, woke up in the middle of the night with the worst headache of his life. He realized pretty quick that Tylenol wouldn't help and he went to the hospital. Doctors found a large tumor bleeding into the right side of his brain. After surgery, they gave Paul and his wife terrifying news. He had glioblastoma, a hyperaggressive and incurable brain cancer. Surgery and radiation could slow it down, but it was next to impossible to remove all cancer cells. Typical survival time ranged from 12 to 18 months after diagnosis. I just didn't see a path forward, Paul recalls. His mind was flooded with dark thoughts. Would he see his two children graduate? Would he live to be a grandfather? And what, a, what of all the plans he made with his wife, Francine? Paul knew the deck was stacked against him because of the blood-brain barrier a dense layer of cells within the tiny blood vessels that line the brain. The barrier evolved to protect the human brain from infections in the bloodstream, which it does really well. The catch is that it also blocks both small and large molecule drugs and other medicines from doing their job. Supersized molecules like the new generation of monoclonal antibodies have even less of a shot to get through. With glioblastomas, the frontline standard of care is radiation plus a chemotherapy drug called temozolomide, which can slow the growth and spread of cancer cells. But under normal conditions, noted Dr. Graham Woodsworth, a neurosurgeon at the University of Maryland School of Medicine, chemotherapy, get, chemotherapy gets in a little, but not a lot. The drug's effectiveness is severely hampered. As a result, only 10% of glioblastoma patients hang on for five years. That's where the latest InsaTech technology comes in. And InsaTech is spelled I-N-S-I-G-H-T-E-C technology. InsaTech technology comes in. Instead of using focused ultrasound for heat, doctors pair lower frequency sound waves with an injection that sends microscopic bubbles into the bloodstream. As the acoustic energy pulses through the patient's helmet, it makes the bubbles vibrate and bounce around. The molecular commotion pulls cells apart, creating a temporary opening in the blood-brain barrier. The breach lasts six to 12 hours, long enough to infuse the desired drug. According to Dr. Desai, the hypothesis is that focused ultrasound can boost the amount of temozolomide actually delivered to a tumor by a significant factor. Paul Hudspeth was one of the first patients to enroll in a phase two clinical study of this technique at Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center in Toronto. As his neurosurgeon, Dr. Nur Lipsman said, the people who volunteered to be the first in any kind of early phase trial, there's something really unique about them. They have a kind of pioneer spirit but they're also tremendously altruistic and selfless. Or as another member of Paul's string quartet put it, he always thinks of other people first. Paul came through the procedure with, with flying colors. He repeated the focus ultrasound process in subsequent rounds of chemotherapy. For three years after his initial operation, he beat the odds. His brain scans were clean and he was back at his job, playing the cello and living his life. To help raise funds for Sunnybrook's Gary Hurwitz Brain Sciences Center, Paul spoke with other potential clinical trial participants and shared his journey. He never stopped thinking of others. 
Sadly, in August 2021, Paul lost his battle with glioblastoma, but during those precious years after his treatment with Focus Ultrasound, he gained quality time with his family and friends, and Paul made scientific discovery a part of his legacy. In his memory, Paul's family has asked that donations in his memory go to support Focus Ultrasound research for glioblastoma. Though we're still in early days with this technology, it may turn out that temozolomide and other drugs are more effective than they've been given credit for. For example, there's a monoclonal antibody called Herceptin, Herceptin that has proven highly effective in treating a class of primary breast cancers. But when patients develop brain metastasis from this type of breast cancer, Herceptin fall, falls flat. Could a focus ultrasound and micro bubbles make the difference? Meanwhile, Insight Tech has collaborated with several medical centers in opening the blood brain barrier more than 300 times in more than 100 clinical trial patients. With no major safety events, the company plans to submit this technique to the FDA to help break down the barriers to treating brain cancer, Parkinson's, and Alzheimer's disease. With Alzheimer's cases, the problem is more global than local. The target is different as well. Inside Tech is homing in on the hippocampus, the seat of memory. What's fascinating is that the plaque associated with dementia appears to break up and diminish wherever the blood-brain barrier is weakened, even without adding a drug to fight the disease. As you'll see in chapter 22, Alzheimer is a graveyard of failed drugs and scientists have yet to agree on its root cause. Dr. Desai suggests that simply unlocking the barrier gives more access to the immune system to go in, recognize the plaque and destroy it. Once Insight Tech gets permission to open the entire barrier, Dr. Desai can imagine a future where Alzheimer patients can, an ultra, can get an ultrasound haircut every month or two to keep your plaque burden low and stable and prevent severe progression of the disease. But Inside Tech Ultimate Quest isn't a stabilized patient. It's an outright cure for cancers, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, depression, and any other brain disorder you can name. Wow. As Focus Ultrasound gains acceptance as a safe and reliable technology, it will be an invaluable testing ground as a drug delivery vehicle for medicines that previously fell short or for others now in the pipeline. The plan, Dr. Desai says, is to get them to the right places at the right time in a really meaningful way. Think of this as the Uber for drug therapy into the brain. It's a good Uber. Finally, the latest frontier for inside tech is opioid addiction. They found a part of the brain that contributes to anxiety and addiction and that lights up when exposed to drugs. A clinical trial using low frequency ultrasound kicked off at the West Virginia University Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute. The first participant was a 39 year old man with a long history of substance abuse with prescri prescription opioids as well as heroin. They placed heroin in front of him and saw through the MRI what part of his brain lit up. They then applied focus ultrasound waves to the nucleus acubens, a key structure in the brain involved in addiction and anxiety. He came through the procedure safely and successfully, demonstrating the same part of the brain linked to addiction did not light up anymore. Though the evidence is still mostly anecdotal at this stage, preliminary results have been promising, which is why the WVU Rockefeller Neuroscience Institute is pursuing this study to try and solve for one of the most challenging issues facing our society. So now you know there's a way to have brain surgery without a single incision. Imagine what the future will bring. Our next chapter dives into some incredible solutions that can actually not just treat, but eliminate disease. I'm sure you've heard about the power of CRISPR, and gene therapy. So let's take the next step in understanding about how our lives are about to radically change and how healing 
yet we can be permanent. Wow, incredible, huh? Amazing, wow. So that concludes chapter seven. What an incredible chapter. Again, if you found this valuable, if you know somebody, if you thought of somebody that can really just benefit from this information and what you're learning and maybe just share it to those that you love, um, definitely so important, all the amazing things that are taking place right now that's available right now to so many people and what's about to come as well. So, I mean, just amazing, amazing information. I'm so happy that Tony actually did this, wrote this book and, you know, was able to, to actually get it published for, you know, people like you and I to actually know what's out there and know what's to come and to just gain that knowledge as well. And so uh, let me know in the comments if you found val something valuable from this, uh, you know, and subscribe if you haven't. Get notified for the next Read With Me session on chapter eight that's called Gene Therapy and CRISPR, the cure for disease. Gene therapy and CRISPR are up pending the way we treat and cure disease. I mean, we're talking about curing all these diseases, depression, from being able to go into the brain with like a, a focused ultrasound instead of like having to literally do a surgery. It's just absolutely phenomenal, amazing, impressive. And it's like, just if you have an idea that like all things are possible, there's always a way to make it happen with all this technology that's taking place. Um, it's just really, really beautiful. So I'm excited to go into the next Read With Me session. Hope you have a beautiful rest of your day, a beautiful weekend, and we'll see you on the next Read With Me session and we'll see you soon, all right? Take care and we'll see you very, very shortly.